We're going to look at factors of algebraic expressions today, but before we do that, let's remind ourselves of the words where we've seen them before in relation to numbers. So, when we said 4 is a factor of 12, what we meant is that 4 divides into 12 with no remainder. And we can see this by saying because 12 divided by 4 gives you the whole number 3 with no remainder. We know multiplication and division are closely related, so we can in fact rewrite that division as a multiplication. 3 times 4 is 12. So we can identify that 4 is a factor of 12 either by seeing that 12 divided by 4 gives you a whole number, or by say, seeing that 3 multiplied by a whole number gives you 12. So 4 is a factor of 12 because 4 divides into 12 with no remainder, or because a whole number multiplied by 4 gives you 12. And of course there are lots of other factors of 12. For example, 3 is a factor of 12, right? Okay, highest common factor. Uh, these uh, would say we wanted to find the highest common factor of 9 and 12. We're looking for highest, in other words, the biggest. It has to be a factor, but we want the biggest factor. And common, well, if we say things are, so, you know, you have something in common with someone, it's something that you have that's the same with somebody else. So in other words, we want a factor that's a factor of 9 and also a factor of 12, and we want the biggest one. So we could say 9, all right, its factors are 1 and 9 and 3 and 3, and 12, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. What factors do they have in common? Well, they both have 1 and 3 as factors, but we want the highest one, so the answer there is obviously 3. Okay, so now let's think about finding the highest common factor of some algebraic expressions. Now, we're finding the highest common factor of some algebraic expressions, we're asking ourselves, what expression can we find that will divide into this and this, and this, without a remainder. Although remainder doesn't really make sense to talk about when you've got m's and n's and everything, but without anything being left over. What divides into this, this, and this, without anything being left over? Now I'm going to show you my little method for doing this. What I do is I write each of these things underneath each other, and I pay very careful attention to putting numbers under numbers, m's under m's, and n's under n. So 6m, 8m, n, and then 12n, right? Then I say to myself, okay, I need to find out the highest common factor of these three things. So the highest thing that can divide into all three of them. And I'm going to look at it bit by bit. So let me look at the numbers. What's the highest number that will divide into 12, 18, and 6? Well, 6 is obviously so. That is something you should be able to do from your old work on number. If you don't, you need to go back and revise that. Now the next question I have is, can m divide into each and every one of these things? Well, if I have a look, I've got an m here and m here, but I don't have any m here. And so m can't divide into 12n. So I can't include m in my common factors. And n, can I include that? Well, can n divide into each and every one of these? Well, if I have a look at them here very neatly, I can see it's missing from here. So I can't include n in my common factor because if I did include it in my common factor, my common factor would not be able to divide into 6m. So my highest common factor of these three things is just 6. And this tells me that 6m can be written as 6 times m. 18mn can be written as 6 times 3 times mn. And 12n can be written as 6 times 2n. And can you see there's nothing more in these things that they actually have all three of them in common. Let's have a look at another example. These are in your key concepts book, so I suggest you write them down as we go. 20p squared q cubed, 10p cubed qr, and 30p to the 4r, and we want to find the highest common factor. 
Again, I go through it step by step. What is the highest common factor of these numbers? Well, what goes into 10, 20 and 30? Obviously, 10. So this tells me that 10 can divide into each and every one of these things. Now I have to think, can I include P? Well, I can because there's P's in each and every one. But how many P's can I include? Well, I can only include two. I've got to go for the smallest exponent because if I say take took P cubed, P cubed wouldn't be able to go into this one. So I have to take the smallest, so P squared. Can I include Q? Well, can you see there's no Q here? So if I included Q in my common factor, it wouldn't be able to divide into 30 P to the 4 R because that one doesn't have any Qs. And can I include an R? Well, no, I can't because this thing here, 20 P squared cube, cubed, does not have any Rs. So my highest common factor of all three of these is 10 P squared.